Hello and welcome to today's lesson. We're doing 10-6 segment relations. We're going to break this lesson into two parts. And so today we're going to do chords that are on the inside of a circle and we're going to be talking about segments, not the arc measures like we have been doing, but segments. And then we're going to go into some algebra review after that. So how would we solve for x? Well, if we were in school, we would be using geometer's sketch pad right now, and I would have you do an experiment. And then that experiment, we would be measuring the length of A, the length of B, the length of X, and the length of Y, and then we'd investigate and figure things out. So basically, you want to focus on one chord, and then you want to take A times B. That is going to be equal to, now when you focus on the other chord, x times y. So when your chords are on the inside of that circle, you take one part times the other part. Make sure you keep the same chord together and then do the other chord and those two are going to end up being equal. So we're going to do that first example second and we're going to do this one here first. So here an archaeologist discovered a fragment of an ancient disc. So disc knows that it's going to be a circle and you can just see that fragmented part over there in brown. To calculate its original diameter they drew a chord AB and the perpendicular bisector. If that's going to be the perpendicular bisector remember that must be the diameter of the circle and it is going to come down to that chord perpendicular and it is going to cut it in half. So if they tell us that AQ is 5, then this also has to be 5. So we just found out we're going to take one chord and do part times part. So we're going to do 5 times 5 and that has to be equal to what the other chord is and so we know this chord is 3 and we don't know what this chord is here so we are going to call that x or w whatever we're going to call it so now 25 equals 3x divide both sides by 3 and this is going to come out to be 8 and 1 third okay is going to be the length of this piece right here. Well, if we want to know the whole diameter, because they're asking us the diameter of the disc, we're going to have to add the three inches to this other piece on here. And so this diameter is going to be 11 and one third, and they're measuring in inches. Okay, so you're going to do part times part, focus on one whole chord, equals the opposite chord. All right, let's go back to this first example here. So I'm going to focus on one chord. So I'm going to do 15 times the other chord, other part of the chord, and then I'm going to focus on the other chord here. So I'm going to do 10 times x plus 4. All right, now we're going to use our distributive. So we have 15x plus 15 is equal to 10x plus 40. I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides. So I end up with 5x, and I'm going to subtract 15 at the same time. So I believe that ends up being 25, divide both sides by 5, and x is 5 in this. So that is the half of the lesson dealing just with the chords. On Monday, we're going to be dealing with them being... Um, secants and tangents and how we would solve. So we're just going to work on this for today with the chords on the inside. Now what we're going to focus on is our algebra review. Okay, And in our algebra review, we're going to be factoring quadratic formula, but mainly completing the square. Um, at the end of this 10-6 lesson, they have four questions and they want you to complete it by doing completing the square. So you have seven problems for today's homework. Three of them are what we just went over and then the next four are completing the square. Now I want you to put your answers in for completing the square online, but I want you to also do all of the work on a piece of paper with your work, take a picture and send it to me because I want to be knowing that you are actually practicing completing the square. My daughter, Emma, actually is in advanced algebra, and she um, that's exactly what they're doing right now. And so I know going through this review will be super helpful. 
All right, so in this first problem here, we've got x plus 3 quantity squared equals 25. This is how completing the square will help us. If you look on the left-hand side, you can see that that's a perfect square, and actually so is the right-hand side. So we can solve this by taking the square root of both sides. So we end up with x plus 3, because that square and square root cancel each other out, and the square root of 25 is 5. Now remember, you can take 5 squared and get 25, or a negative 5. So you have to remember to do plus or minus 5. Now to solve this, we're going to subtract 3 from both sides. So that these cancel out, and we have x equals, now we have two problems, negative 3 plus 5, and negative 3 minus 5. So we end up getting two answers here. We get a 2 and we get a negative eight. Okay, so you see how nice that worked because that was a perfect square. So now where does that perfect square come from? So sometimes we want to create a perfect square so we can solve it so nice and easy. So in here, x plus three squared, remember that means x plus three times x plus three. So now if we factor this out, this means x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. I'm kind of just giving you the basis now as to why or how we're going to do this. So this is x squared plus 6x plus what? Okay, now we know it's a 9 because we're just going backwards from here. But what if we didn't know this 9? What if we just had x squared plus 6x and I want you to come up with the number that would go in there so that I can write this as a perfect square? How do you go about doing that? Well, if you look at the pattern here every time, do you see how this repeats itself? We have a 3x plus 3x, so there's two of them. So take this middle number right here, the 6x, divide it by 2, and that's where you get your 3x. Now square this, not just the, just the number. 3 squared is 9, and that's what would go there would be a 9. And what did I erase over here? What's underneath that scribble is the plus 9. So now that we figured out that this is plus 9, now you could go back and write that as x plus 3. So I just wanted to go through and show you where that comes from, okay? So now let's go back to that first problem that we had, and let me just show you. We already have the answers. The first problem we went through when we got our answers are 2 and negative 8. So let's see what happens. We know it's a 2 and a negative 8. So could we also do this by factoring? Okay, well, let's square this out. x squared plus 6x plus 9 is 25 subtract 25 from both sides so we have x squared plus 6x minus 16 is 0 okay now let's see if this factors so let's see we get an x and an x what are two things that multiply together to get a negative 16 is going to be 8 times 2 now if we have a positive 8 and a subtract 2 Positive 8 minus 2 gives us the 6 in the middle, and now we find our 0 factors. So remember, x plus 8 equals 0, so x is negative 8, exactly what we got when we did it the other way. And then x minus 2 equals 0, so that'll be a positive 2. Okay, and then the third way of doing this would be using the quadratic formula. Remember, the quadratic formula is the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And where do we get that from? Well, let's go back to this equation in standard form. So a is the coefficient of your x squared, so that's 1. b is the coefficient of your linear term right here, 6. And c is your constant, negative 16. So let's just plug all of those numbers in here. So the opposite of b is going to be a negative 6 plus or minus b squared is 36 minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a, which is going to be 2. So now if we do this math in here and 
we have negative 4 times 16. I think that comes out to be, and then add 36. I think this is 64, and we add 36 to it. So we have negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 100 all over 2. So we have negative 6 plus 10 over 2, and negative 6 minus 10 all over 2. And negative 6 plus 10 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Negative 6 minus 10 is negative 16. Divided by 2 is negative 8. So you can see all three methods work for solving this. Okay, I need to quickly get through some more completing the squares here. All right, so we're going to solve this by completing the square. So I have x squared plus 4x. I want to fill in something here. And whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other side. I want to be able to write this as a perfect square. So I can randomly pick numbers, but I'm going to pick a very specific number and put it on both sides. So I'm going to take half of this number. So half of 4 is 2, and then 2 squared. So I'm going to take 4, divide by 2, and then square it. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And if I add that on one side, I add on the other side. The whole point is for me to be able to write x plus 2, quantity squared. Now negative 3 plus 4 is 1. Now I'm going to square root both sides. So I have x plus 2 equals, and remember the square root of 1 is plus and minus 1. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I have negative 2 plus 1 and negative 2 minus 1. So this gives me a negative 1. And this gives me a negative 3. So here are my two solutions. Okay, you can go ahead and try and factor that. So let me just over here very quickly, because I know I'm going to run out of time here. I'm going to add 3 to both sides, so I get plus 3 equals 0. Now try factoring that. What are two things that multiply together to get 3? So I'm going to have a plus 3 and a plus 1. 3 times 1 is 3. And when you add them together, you get 4. And now your 0 factors are negative 3 and negative 1. All right, last problem I have to go through here on completing the square. So when you look at this, you see a coefficient of a negative 1. And you see that everything actually here is divisible by a negative 2. So I do not want that coefficient of a negative 2. So I'm going to divide everything by a negative 2. So I end up with x squared. 12 divided by negative 2 is a negative 6. And 22 divided by a negative 2 is a negative 11. Okay, now... In order to do this, I want to be able to have x squared minus 6x, and that number right there, 11, I don't want that. I'm going to put it on the other side, 11, and then I always leave myself a blank so that I remember if I add or subtract something on one side, I also do it on the other side. So here, I added 11, and I added 11 so that that canceled out, and I moved it to the other side. Now I'm going to pick my special number here. I'm going to take negative 6, I'm going to divide by 2, and then I'm going to square it. So negative 6 divided by 2 is a negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. When you add 9 to one side, you have to add 9 to the other side. The whole point of me doing that is for me to be able to write this as a perfect square. So this is x minus, because I take my sign from here, and the square root of 9 is 3. Okay, the whole point is so now I can take the square root of both sides. So I have x minus 3 equals, now the square root of 20 is the same thing as 4 times 5, so I get 2 root 5. And remember, when you take the square root, we have to have a plus and a minus. So right now I need to add 3 to both sides, so it's going to be 3 plus 2 root 5, and it's going to be 3 minus 2 root 5. If they ask for exact answers, these are the answers that you need to put in, okay, when they're asking for exact answers. All right, I only have about 30 seconds left here.
So your assignment is on line 10-6. You have seven questions. The last four is 27 through 30. Do it on paper and enter it in line, online, and then take a picture and send that in. All right, good luck.